Hello, Billy. Hey, what's up, man? Okay. So, let's get this started. Uh, I have a bunch of different transcripts here. Um, let's go over the first thing that I addressed in my last video to you. Uh, we had a back and forth concerning your whole in different interpretations argument, and then I, I pointed out that being a vegan, our interpretations of food is different. You would call something food that I wouldn't necessarily call food. Yes. And then in your latest video, you changed it to preparation of food was the different interpretation. And then you said that to make it analogous to what you're trying to say, the food itself has to say that there's only one way to prepare it. To serve it, yes. Right. Um, do you understand that that's not at all analogous to Christianity? Well, I think it is. Well, we have to define if we're talking about a, an interpretive Christianity or the evangelical Christianity. Um, well, we don't really, uh, because Christianity can encompass both. Then we're talking about interpretive Christianity. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So you're, you're saying that it's either one or the other. You're kind of trying to create a dichotomy there. No. There are people, you know, the evangelicals believe that it is, uh, the Bible is literal. No, 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 no. Uh, evangelicals can not be that but biblical literalists. Well, those are the evangelicals I'm talking about. Okay, so, you mean, so, so what you're saying is it's either biblical literalism or interpretive Christianity. That's what you're saying. No. Okay, well, what are you saying then? The biblical literalists, if they want to believe that the Bible is literal, then the existence of, say, interpretation or the other denominations separate from theirs shouldn't exist if the Bible is literal. Okay, but you do understand that it's impossible to be a biblical literalist without some level of interpretation, right? Yes, but they try to adhere to that literal thing as much as possible. So, okay, so they're trying to be as literal as possible, regardless of the fact that they're still interpreting things. Hey, they, you, you can put any face on it you want, but the fact still remains that... Well, to me, uh, biblical literalism and interpretive Christianity are the same thing. I mean, well, well, literalism is an interpretation of Christianity. Well, not, well, not only that, but biblical literalists can interpret the Bible differently as well. Yes, but... They, I mean, you can have two literalists who disagree as to what the Bible's trying to say on a given passage. Yes, I accept that. So, you know, biblical my literalism... Point is, my point is that that shouldn't be allowed. Why? All right, All right take uh, the God of the, the... Most Christians believe their God is either his... Omniscient and omnip Would you agree with that? No. <laughs> I, well, I just watched a video by Gambler where he said he doesn't actually like to use the omnis. Well, that's okay. But is the is does if you read the Bible, is that the interpretation you would get? It, or do any Christians claim that God is omniscient or omniscient? Some some Christians might say that. All right. So okay. now let's take so let's take those Christians. Okay. Okay. If they believe their God is omniscient and omnipotent, and if they by Bible they may say. You may not believe, you may, it does say, but you may not take this literally, or someone else may not. But it says, if you have at least a, the tiniest mustard seed amount of faith, you can do what Jesus did. You can perform his miracles, or you can move a mountain. Basically, you can, if you wish it or pray for it, you can do it. So if someone takes that literally, then that means that is evidence. God has given you evidence for its existence. If you perform this deed, if you wish for, say, cherries to rain from the sky, and they don't, then there's something amiss here. Okay, okay. That, that's actually not true. I mean, you can have somebody who takes literally and they'll read the passage saying if you, can, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed that you can move a mountain, they might still be a literalist and then say that it's not possible actually to have faith the size of a mustard seed because a mustard seed is a physical object and faith is a metaphysical object and you literally can't equate the two. Yes, you can. Look at it this way. If, a, if, if, if the God said, as it does in the Bible, that if you have a mustard seed size amount of faith, you can do, you can perform them, or you can turn, uh, say, water into wine. If the God says that in the Bible, it's in the Bible. How you interpret that doesn't matter, is my, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter how you interpret it, it's in there. So if the God says that, that is the God giving you evidence for its existence. Because well, if, if you can perform that act, then that's evidence for its existence. It, it's existence. If, I, 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 if, if I, you try to perform that act... <laughs> Hey, you just let me finish. If you try to perform that act and you can't, the God ends up alive or it doesn't exist. Okay, but you can easily say that you don't have that level of faith and that nobody has that level of faith except for perhaps Jesus. And only because he's, uh, he's in some way a manifestation of God. And it, 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 the, the size of the mustard seed, all that means is faith, believe. Okay, but it doesn't, you're interpreting. That's all it means. But believe. you're interpreting. 
You're, you're not actually taking it literally, you're just interpreting. If it was literal, then you would say, I have a mustard seed here, is your faith that size? And then we literally couldn't say that. We could not make that measurement. You're trying to take it literally, and I'm trying to explain I'm trying to explain to you that is the context I'm working in for this particular example. Exactly. Literal. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you try to be a biblical literalist, it doesn't work. Oh, because not, no, no, that's not what I'm saying to be a biblical literalist. It's only for those biblical literalists, people who literally believe the thing. That's what I'm saying. All the other interpretations you can forget. I'm specifically what, talking about the biblical what, literalism. Okay, what do you mean by literally believe? That they believe they can move a mountain if they pray. But that's, that not, because, that's not what the passage says. says. It doesn't say that you can move a mountain if you just pray for it. That's not what the passage says. No, it says if you have a mustard seed amount of strength, you can move mountains, or whatever it says. If you that's have a mustard seed, you can move mountains. If, you can move mountains. if, if yeah. it's full. Yes, but, you, but if you're taking it literally, then that doesn't make any sense. Because how do you uh, equate a metaphysical construct of faith with a, mus a physical construct of a mustard seed? You can't do that. You're trying to make sense out of, you're trying to say, you're saying you, you can't make sense out of nonsense, is basically what you're saying. No, well, I'm you're gonna saying you can make a physical measurement out of metaphysical objects. All you're saying is you can't make sense out of nonsense. That, I know. <laughs> That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't right. give physical measurements of a metaphysical concept. Do you if understand? It says, if it says in the Bible that, that you can move a mountain if you have a mustard seed size of faith, that, what does that mean now? It means that if you have a certain amount of faith that you can equate with a mustard seed, then you can move a mountain. Exactly. But how do you do that? Now, do that. I mean, you're saying that if someone just prays, like if someone's a biblical literalist and all they have to do is pray, and then they can move a mountain. But that's, that's what prayer know. is. That's what prayer is. You're praying for something. No, that's not at you're all. Praying for okay, you're praying for You're adding words that aren't in the passage in order to say that. All right, they don't pray. They just, whatever they do, they wish for it. You don't I don't know, know what to do. Yeah, you don't know. But that's what the passage tells them if they do whatever it is they do. But it doesn't tell they them can move mountains. It doesn't tell them anything descriptive. It just says the size of mustard seed. You don't know what the hell that means. It means if you have faith, you can move a mountain. That's what it means, basically. If you have faith, the size of mustard it, it means, all right, I'll put it to you this way. Say you, uh, say you uh, believe that, uh, well, take the, Go ahead. Right, take the word uh, big. You can say something is big. You can say it's bigger, and you can say it's more big. Well, if you, you, if you just use the word big and you attribute it, say, exchange the word mustard seed with big, well, that's what the, if a mustard seed, if yours is small, and then you have big, and then you have bigger and biggest and whatever, the mustard seed is one of those. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. But you don't know what that means. I just told you it's... No, you, you try to give a comparative example by saying something can be big, something can be small, and something can be bigger than what is small. And that's true, but how do you do that with metaphysical concepts? Is big, bigger, and biggest metaphysical concepts? Depending on how you look at them. Uh, okay, if we want to do the semantics. Then... Uh, well, it's not, I mean, I, a lot of people like to, like to complain about semantics, but semantics are extremely important because that explains what it is that we're talking about. I mean, you very frequently like to equivocate words, and when you equivocate words, then I have to get semantics games with you because you don't... People must be equates to big, bigger, and biggest. I, not when it comes to faith, no. I can't see that. I don't know what that means. All right. It's, it's like if somebody says a disembodied mind. I don't know what that means. Like I said, you can't make sense out of nonsense. Well, but you're the one saying nonsense. That's your interpretation, I guess. If you can't see, <laughs> if you can't, if you can't see the difference between big, bigger, and bigger, and biggest, and equate that to the size of a mustard seed, that amount of faith, you can do this particular thing. Well, then... Well, no, because I can say that my harmonica is bigger than a, than a mustard seed, but I can't say that my faith is bigger than a mustard seed. I have no measurement to do that. Uh, is it not more probable that this passage was simply metaphorical? It seems more probable because that well, is if it's that metaphorical, is. so if it's metaphorical, then it's outright cannot be taken literally because it would so, not be true. So what? Well, if it's not true, then where does this come from? Where does the Bible come from? Does Men. it come from humans or does it come from a God? Men, and most Christians agree with that. Well, if it comes from men, then men created their God. Not necessarily. Yeah. Well, then where did this notion of this God come from? They, they, if men wrote this book? Uh, I think a lot of people would say that it was divine inspiration. Then that means it came from the God. No, it means that it came from men who thought that they were being divinely inspired. Then, well, that means that it comes from men and they created the God. No. Oh, God. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. If a God yeah. divinely inspired them, then... Uh, the no, see, no, see, that's where you're making the trip up. 
the God, if you can't, that you're just presupposing the existence of a God. You're just presupposing the existence of a God. No, and I say it's divinely inspired. If it's divinely inspired, anyone, men are being no, inspired by something that God, how can you write something about all, all it? I have to say, something? No, no, no. All I have to say is that these men think that they were divinely inspired by God. Whether or not they were is up for discussion. It doesn't matter. They still, the Bible still exists. It's still been written. So, so whether so, if they were divinely inspired by a God, the God is the instrument that wrote the book. If they were not divinely or inspired by God, then they wrote the book, so they invented the God. Well, you can say that men were either tools to write a book, or they were, or they were just people who thought that they were talking to God who wrote the book. If they were tools, they would be they were tools of the God. Yeah, yeah. but it would still be. Written. And that means that God wrote the book. But it would still be written by men. Yeah, like I, I, it doesn't matter if a God is divinely inspiring me. A God could be telling me exactly what it is to write. I see what you're saying. Now. I see what you're saying. The okay. God could be divinely inspiring me, but the words were actually penned by the men. Right. But that's not what I'm talking about. What they're pinning are the no. What they're pinning are the ideas of the God. I'm not talking about literally writing the word "the" on a piece of paper. I'm talking about Christianity. Is is Christianity? What you're equating Christianity now with are the the actual letters, the actual words on the page. That that reduces Christianity. That would do it. You're no, saying Christianity has some words on the page. No, I'm not saying that. No, you keep thinking I'm trying. I'm. Because I, I have no clue what you're saying. I don't know how to help you out here. But I, I always figured that you were saying either you have to take the word literally or there's no such thing as Christianity. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, I, okay, then I have no idea what it is you're trying to say. You believe interpretation is allowed in Christianity. Yeah. I just don't think you believe. Yeah. Now, if I mean, interpretation is allowed in Christianity and I come along with an interpretation, someone can tell me my interpretation is false or they can tell me it's true. Yeah. Those, yeah. Now, they tell me it's false. That means interpret. That means they Interpretation is true. Not necessarily. It, well, all right, it's not true. It means they just believe mine is false and they have their interpretation. But the simple act of telling me my interpretation is false means that there is a not false Christianity. Or they can say that your interpretation is bad. But what's the difference? Well, if, 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 interpretation, if interpretation is allowed, it doesn't matter if it's bad or false. It's simply an interpretation. If they, if they say my interpretation is false, or bad, then they may they mean there is a good one or a correct one. Do you know you are aware that false and bad aren't the same thing, right? Yes, I know that. That's why I use the two words. Like, you brought, like, you like, brought up the word for bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an interpretation can be bad or good, but how do we measure whether or not uh, an interpretation is bad or good? It's very simple. That, and now this is where we get to what I'm saying. My point is, I don't care which one is bad or good or true or false. My point is that my interpretation is as valid as theirs because but, Christianity is open to interpretation. Okay, so we can say that econ that economy is open to interpretation. So everybody says again. I didn't hear you. We can say that economy is open to interpretation. Therefore, uh, all ideas of in the economy are equally valid. No, no. That's exactly what you just said. No, this I literally just replaced Christianity with economy. That's exactly what you just said. I'm not saying no, I didn't say that. I'm saying that's not what I mean. It's well, then you need to explain your position better. The economy does not have a superpowered being that sent it. What the superpowered being sent is either this or that. If the superpowered being can't, if what the superpowered being can't tell you what it actually sent, that is not equal to a man-made construct like the economy. The superpower being sent something. So that's something it sent. If men are allowed to interpret it, then no men will never know what that thing superpowered entity sent actually is. Right. So who, what, who cares? Well, that, yeah. okay. that's well I mean, you can't you can't say that there's an objective one hundred percent this is the this is the one hundred percent fact of Christianity in a way that you can objectively measure. No. But who cares? Then, well then that means that hell, there are Christians that believe hell exists, there are not, Christians that not don't. All, not all, yeah. There are Christians that don't. Well, if any interpretation is equally valid, that means hell no, I, I, doesn't it exist. It's not equally valid. I, I mean, all right, that's what we agree. Do we agree that interpretation cannot be allowed? If not every oh. interpretation is <laughs> okay. valid. What did you get me saying interpretation cannot be equally valid and interpretation can't be allowed? How, how does that, that lead? It, because... If every interpretation is not valid, that means there must be an interpretation that is. No, there can just be yeah. interpretations that, that no, there can just be interpretations that are better at describing reality than the than the bad interpretation. Like evolution's a fact, for instance. If your interpretation includes that includes evolution, then that's a lot better than an interpretation that excludes evolution. I know. We're not talking it, 
was evolution uh, discovered, was it sent by God, what a God? Is it what a God wants you to believe? I don't know. I don't know what God wants. That Christianity, Christianity is what a God has sent, is what a God wants you to believe. Now, if you can't decipher what this God sent, what it wants you to believe, if you can make up what it sent and what it wants you to believe, but they're then not making it up. Okay, I, I went over this in my video to you. I, a lot of Christians like to say that when they read the Bible, what the, the thing that's helping them to interpret it is God's manifestation of them through the Holy Spirit. You understand what that means? It, it, it's God helping them to understand what the Bible is trying to say. And that presupposes the existence of a God. Oh, I mean, it, it might. It but does. Well, now, if someone tells me something that presupposes the existence of a God, I would just simply have to have them be, if they want me to buy it, they simply got to prove this God exists. Okay, but you said in your video, in your uh, debate with Riff, that you wouldn't give that argument. That you wouldn't give what? You, uh, Riff actually asked you, why wouldn't you just skip all the bullshit and say, do you have any evidence that God exists? And you said, no, I'm not going to do that. And that's exactly what you said that you, that you would do. No, he was asking, no, the, that is different from if they believe interpretations is on that. No, interpreting, no listen to me. Okay, to, I'll listen to you. That's different from asking, asking someone, do you have evidence for the existence of a God? Is not the same as asking them, do you believe interpretation, interpretation is valid in Christianity? Those are two different things. Right, but that's not what we were talking about when you said that I would ask them to prove it. I said that if we have good yes. bad interpretations, you would say, yeah, but if they're saying they're being led through the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible and that presupposes a God, then if they're presupposing a God, I would ask them to give me to give me proof that there's a God. And I'm saying that's the argument that you said that you wouldn't actually give. So you're saying I would put in that argument. That's not the argument I ever gave. But you said that you would. My art no my argument is that interpretation should not be allowed in just the if someone tells me God told them to uh, to help an old lady across the street, that presupposes the existence of a God already. They they are they already <laughs> stated. Uh, yes, they just said this God told them to help an old lady. Do you know the difference between a presupposition and uh, an evaluative claim that you've looked at and have determined is true? There's a difference between the two. No, they don't, don't, no, no. Even if they say that a God told them to help, that doesn't mean they know it's true. They, they just said a God told them to help someone across the street. They don't know if it's true or not. They just believe it. But you were calling that a presupposition. Do you know the difference between an evaluative claim that people have determined is true and a presupposition? That, that person saying that a God told them to help someone across the street means they believe a God exists to tell them to help someone across okay, the street. But they, and my next question would be, what evidence do you have for the existence of this God? Exactly. Not, my next question would not be, what is your interpretation of this guy? Exactly. So you said so. so they two different things. So before, when you said that you wouldn't give that argument as to how as to what evidence do you have that a god exists, now you're saying that you would if they said that they were attributing whatever good action they did to their god. Because that's a different argument. Oh, uh, okay. So now you're saying that you would give that argument. I never said I wouldn't. I said I wouldn't give it for the argument I'm talking about. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You wouldn't give it for the argument that you're talking about. You just that's about interpretation. Uh, yeah. Interp I, I, that wouldn't apply to the argument of in is interpretation valid in Christianity. I, I, <laughs> well, I could easily just say that they're saying that their interpretation is based on a God existing, and then you would say that's what no. you didn't use the word interpretation. Okay, you just but if I do that, if I do that no. same thing though, isn't it? If I say that they're no. No. Okay, if you, if you omit a word, if you omit a word from a question, it let me finish. Let me finish. If someone says that they're interpreting the Bible and their interpretation of the Bible has some sort of presupposition or a value to truth of a God existing, would you not then say that the argument is not about uh, all these other different interpretations, but of what evidence they have that their God exists? No, they said they, they said they mentioned the word interpretation. Yeah, somebody can interpret the, the Bible and then say that they're being... That is interpretation. I don't know how... Yeah, I know. I, 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 what I'm trying to do is explain to you that when you say, if someone leads an old lady across the street because God told them, so, told them so, that is the argument that you would say you have evidence of this God existing. Now I'm equating yeah. that to an, to an interpretation of the Bible. I'm saying that somebody is interpreting the Bible because they think that God is telling them how to interpret the Bible. And now you're saying that you would use that argument of what evidence you have of this God existing instead of, well, what about all these other interpretations? <laughs> no. The, the God telling someone to help them, uh, help an old lady across the street, you said it came, it was from the Holy Spirit. It came into them. If it's in the book, you have to interpret the words in the book. God speaking directly to someone, you don't have to interpret that. If they believe a God is actually speaking to them, telling them to do this, there's no 
reasonable interpretation because you have a direct line to God. You don't have to interpret anything. It literally told you to help someone across the street. If the God, if it's in the book that it says to help old ladies across the street, and then someone else comes along and says, well, that doesn't mean help old ladies across the street. It means throw them across the street. That is interpretation. Yes, and they can, and both of them can say, well, I read it as leading an old lady across the street, or I, I read it as throwing a lady, old lady across the street because, I don't know, God told me that. Yes, they can both say it's throwing them across the street, but one has a direct link to God, which requires no interpretation of it just said, help them across the street. So no, 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 because, again, I'm telling you, the Bible was written by men. Most Christians agree on this, and the Bible is open to interpretation. Most Christians agree on that. So what I'm telling you is that if one of them claims to have a direct link to God, who's telling them how to interpret the Bible, then how can you say their interpretation no, 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 is wrong? No, 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 no. What I'm, all right, I see what we're getting to. Oh, well, do you, we're, do we're, you? We're, we're our, our lines are clear. Okay, because uh, that, that's great, because I have no clue. When you said that God had to direct, when you said that God spoke to the person directly, what I'm getting now is that you're saying that spoken directly stuff to the person is written in the Bible as well. Is that what you mean? Wait, repeat that? The person that the, the Holy Spirit that God spoke directly to, are you saying that what the God that spoke directly to them is also written in the Bible? Is that what you're saying? No. I'm saying that God told them different. No, I'm telling you that they're saying that God told them how to interpret the Bible. And then, then you're saying that direct line thing is in the Bible. What the God? No, 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 no. It doesn't have to be literal. I'm telling. I'm telling you. No, no, they, no, no. The line doesn't have to be in there. They can simply say that God told me to read this in a way that make that gives me that interpretation. Literal doesn't ha doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Yes, because right? you're saying that if the line is in the Bible, then you can say that God told you to do that. But that's not what I'm talking about here. All right, let me, all right, let me voice what I think you're saying and so I can understand, make sure I understand. All right, you have a Bible. Let's say it says in there, help old ladies across the street. Those words are there. Okay. If someone reads those words, you can read them there. If you say so. Then you, no, this is just an example. Uh, okay, okay. Now you have a person. I'm only trying to, think, trying to understand your art. Make sure I understand your art. That's why I'm giving this example. Go ahead. Now there's a person that God spoke, speaks directly to right into their heart with the Holy Spirit, and tells them to help old ladies across the street. Now, the person who reads it in the book, because God is not speaking to them, must interpret if it means walk them across the street or throw them across the street. The person with the direct link to God, that God tells them to help old ladies across the street, they may have to interpret throw or um, walk them, but the God is a direct link to them, telling them to take the uh, person across the street. The other person doesn't know this God exists. It, he simply has to interpret the words in the book. There's a difference between those two because the God is directly speaking to the person and the person reading the book, all they're doing is interpret. They have to interpret this book. The way they do it makes any interpretation possible. But the way the uh, God speaking to the person does it, if the God's directly speaking to them, the God can actually tell them what it actually means. It can because it's directly speaking to them. Interpretation is not allowed because if the God wants something, it's going to clarify it for the person because it's speaking to it. We already know it's speaking to it. It's, gonna, it's not going to tell you to, it's, well, that's as clear as I can make it. Uh, as clear as you can make it? Uh, I'm sorry, because I still, like, I, I think you're trying to understand my argument, but I don't think you really do. I apologize. Uh, that, that could be on part my poor articulation or whatever. Well, well if you don't believe I'm, I uh, expressed it correctly, that's why I expressed it this way to see if that's what you mean. Well, all right, go ahead and tell me again, and so I can... Um, okay, so two Christians are reading the Bible, right? And we're going to say that an old, help an old lady across the street is in the Bible somewhere. Yes. And one of them has God telling them to interpret it that way. Yes. And the other one doesn't have God telling them to interpret it anyway, but they read it as throw an old lady across the street. Now it doesn't say now it doesn't say to walk the old lady across the street. It doesn't say to throw the old lady across the street. It just says help them across the street. So either way, neither of them can take this literal if what the God means is to lead them across the street, right? Well slow down, let me make sure I got you so far. They're both reading the Bible you're saying. Yeah. Alright, they're so they're both and they both read the words help old ladies across the street. Yeah. One of them one of them is not being spoken to by God, so he must interpret what that says. That yeah, right? yeah. One of them is being spoken to by God, and he's being told to help the old lady across the street, but not how. No, he's being told by God that helping the old lady across the street means to lead them across the street. Leading them across the street 
Leading Democrat, all right, leading Democrat, what do you mean by leading them across the street? That he has to interpret how to lead them across the street? I, I, I don't think that I can be any more explicit than leading. I mean, I mean, I think everyone understands that leading means to take their hand and lead them across the street. Yes. And I, I've been walk ahead of them and then pull the old lady with you. That's yes. What yes. All right, so leading them is not throwing them across the street is what I wanted to clarify. If you lead someone, you can grab them by the hair. You lead someone, you can uh, okay. drag them by their tongue. We can easily, we can them, easily remedy them. You can this. drag them by their eyeball. We can easily. But I now understand what you mean. You mean lead them by the hand. Right. And we can nice, easily, nicely and allow them to stay on their feet. Right. And this is what the God is telling told this to do. Yes. So that there's no interpretation involved because the God has told them exactly how and what to do and oh, it'll be right. nice and peaceful. The oh, other person. Regardless. The no, it's not. A, yeah, yeah, they're being interpreted. The words are still being interpreted, but they're no, being... No, but you, you assumed I knew what led me. I, I didn't know you didn't what led me, but you, you simply didn't know that it has more than one meaning. Now, if the God says to leave the person across the street with hand and let them walk behind you, <laughs> they, that means they can interpret it any way they want. But if uh -huh. the God, God, by saying lead, will inform the person, then... It would be the same as the uh, person that must interpret by reading the words and simply guess what it means. Okay. I, I don't think, I honestly don't know how I can make it any clearer, and I don't think you're getting me, so we're just going to have to move on from that point. Um, so the next thing I want to address is the next thing that I addressed in my video to you, where you said that you were not calling Theo Warner, the per calling Theo Warner the Christian, a Nazi, a white supremacist, and a, and a child murderer. Yes. And, the, and you weren't calling Cardinal Virtues and myself uh, sympathizers of child murdering, uh, white supremacy, and Nazis, but you were calling Cardinal Virtues and myself the sympathizers, sympathizers of child not white supremacy, right? Yes. Okay. Do you understand why that doesn't make any sense at all? I'm sure you'll explain. Okay. If I told, if I went up to a Ku Klux Klan member and say his name was Bob, and I said, I don't want to talk to Bob the racist right now. I want to talk to Bob. Would that make any sense? That would make no sense. That would, is you're looking at parts of the sum and separating them from the whole, and you can't do that. It would be the, as ridiculous as if I were to say, I'm not talking to you, Billy Bob, I'm talking to your chest. Mm -hmm. That's how ridiculous that sounds. Do you understand now? Yeah, I always have this or that. That's nothing new to me. Okay, so you, you understand that saying, I'm not calling Theo the person of all these things, I'm calling Theo the Christian all these things, is essentially... Uh, nope. Yes. I, I, well, okay. Um, <laughs> if I say, all right, let me try and make this a little bit better. If I say, Billy Bob, you the person are a good person, but you the YouTube personality are uh, a bigot and a Nazi and a black supremacist, would that not be me calling you all those things? No, uh, no. Okay. Because I'm not those things. You would need evidence to prove that. Well, I don't need evidence to call you names. Yeah, but you, if you want people to believe that's what I am and you believe that's what I am, you have to have evidence to prove it. Right, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about whether or not it would be valid for me to separate you from your YouTube self and then say, I'm just insulting the YouTube self, I'm not insulting you. Mm -hmm. There's, well, there's my, you, well, there would have to be a me YouTube self and a higher being me YouTube self that says, wait, <laughs> there has to be a higher being YouTube you? Yes. Why? Well, let's take a look at Thea Warner. Now, Thea Warner has told me he's not a Christian, so we won't use Thea Warner as an example. We'll use Christians. An interpretation of the Christian God is that it is a racist. Would you agree that that is an interpretation some people hold of the Christian God? Maybe. I don't know. Well, I'm not a mind reader. So you don't believe there are people out there that believe the Christian God I don't is know. a racist? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. So what, what, what do you know of anything bad people think about the Christian God? Well, I know that Name one thing. I know a lot of atheists that read it literally, like you, who call the Christian God a Nazi and a, and a racist. All right, so you know there are people out there who believe the Christian God is a racist. Yeah, but those people think that, Christ, that the Christian God in general are, are, is fictional. So why do they matter? So do you believe that there are people out there that believe the Christian God is a racist? Sure. Yes or no? Sure. All right, thank you. <laughs> now, because the Christian God is a racist, if you worship this God, you worship... Wait, <laughs> Did you, wait, you can't say some people think he is, therefore he is. No, I'm not saying, look, we're talking interpretations, aren't we? This is an interpretation. If right, you but can, you can't project your own interpretation on the people who don't accept your interpretation. That's not what I'm saying. Listen, there are people who believe he, he uh, 
the interpretation of the Christian God is that it is racist. So that is an interpretation. So there's an interpretation that the Christian God is racist. That's just the fact. Period. Now, in my opinion, that's, that's the fact that people believe that there are people that I agree. You think that the, that the Christian God is racist. I agree. Oh, no, no. I'm saying, no. That was just an example to show you that the Christian God is a people, that that's an idea that exists. Are you disputing that? That that is an idea that exists? Wait. <laughs> no, I'm not disputing that. I'm saying... All right. Then let me go on from there. All right. There is an interpretation out there of the Christian God that it is racist. That is my point. Okay. Whether it exists or not, that is my point. So what? If a person worships this God, they worship to the person that has this interpretation of this God, to the person that worships, the person that worships this God worships racism because that God embodies racism. Okay. So that would make the person... But that's worship. exactly what I said you were doing that you denied you were doing. That is projecting your own interpretation onto people who don't accept your interpretation. No, no. You, see, what you don't get is my interpretation. It simply is an interpretation to see if people will refute the interpretation. Right. There's Yes, if they refute the interpretation, then that means my interpretation is... If they can just say that they don't get yes, other exactly, Yes, but exactly, but see, you, that's not my point. My point is if they can tell me my interpretation is invalid or bad, then that means there is a valid or good interpretation. Now, you do, you do understand that saying, unless you prove that the God that I'm talking about isn't a racist, then you worship a racist. No, is, that's not what I'm saying. So you're confusing. But you can't, I, well, I'm sorry, but every single video you made to Theo was essentially calling him a racist. Well, sorry, calling Theo the Christian a racist. So that was you projecting your interpretation of the Bible onto Theo. Yes, not on... on Wait, <laughs> you just that's not, that's not what you were doing. I didn't say that. You just don't understand. No, I, well, yeah, I don't understand. But <laughs> you said I'm not doing that when I said you cannot project your interpretation onto other people who don't accept your interpretation. And then when I said that's what you've been doing in Theo, you said, yes, that's what I'm doing. So what the hell? Well, what you missed is earlier is that I said I created an interpretation to see if anyone would dispute it. Right. The interpretation not, is not on Theo Warner. It is on Christians. Uh, you can't. Theo, yeah, but you, you went ahead and put it on Theo Warner by saying Theo Warner is a, Christ, is a Christian and that makes him a child murderer and a Nazi and a racist. Yes, now if someone disputes that, if someone disputes that interpretation of Christianity, then that means that my interpretation is either invalid or false or bad. If they dispute it, that means if it is invalid, false, or bad, that means there is a Christianity that is not invalid, false, or bad. If that Christianity exists, then that means interpretation. You don't need to say that your interpretation is wrong in order to say that it's bad. Yes, but if it's bad, that means there's a good one. Yes. So that means that interpretation cannot be allowed. If there's a good interpretation, if mine can be excluded, then that means that there's... What's well, excluding? That, that they're just saying that that doesn't apply to me. Yes, it, it's bad. They're saying they don't accept it. If they don't accept it, that means my interpretation is excluded from the uh, conversation. Yes, if my question of what yeah, it's now listen, 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 excluded listen. when it doesn't yes. now, work. Now, if my conversation, if my interpretation can be excluded from the conversation, if people get to pick what interpretations are allowed in the conversation, it's all then they basically are picking stuff they like. That it that it has nothing to do with what actual Christianity is, whether it's my interpretation, theirs, or anyone else's. Oh boy, um, I think the only the only real thing that I'm trying to say here is that if you call a Christian uh, them being a Christian, which I still don't think that that makes any sense to separate their Christian self from their self. Uh, if you're going to say that a Christian is worshiping a a, a child murderer and by proxy are a child murderer. And they can easily say your interpretation of what a Christian is is wrong if they don't look at it that way. No, let's look at the... Uh, it's very easy to prove. I can simply ask Theo Warner, are you a worshiper of a child murderer? And he'll say, no, I'm not. And then that's oh. it. That, that, there you go. You're refuted. Uh, yes, but that's not my argument. My argument is that that's his interpretation. Of his, I look, put the, let's look at the story of uh, the child murderer. Thing. Let's look at the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac, where yeah. you have where this God ordered Abraham to kill his son. And no. Isaac. Well, no, he didn't order to kill him. He ordered him to bind him to a stone. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. Some people interpret it as... Exactly, interpretation. Yes, and... Interpretation. 
Yes, my interpretation is nothing but an interpretation like anyone else's. That I, that yeah, I know. Which yes. Means, yeah, yeah. I'll so agree. are you are you saying my interpretation is excluded from the conversation? No. So then you are saying my interpretation is Christian? I'm saying your interpretation is an interpretation of the Bible. My interpretation. Well, every, you every, 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 Christian, every, Christianity, every Christianity is an interpretation of the Bible. No, That's not. all they are. It's not. Yes, they are. Okay, you are aware that Christianity predates the Bible, right? Christianity, well, that's not what I meant. I mean, every interpretation now is, in an, is in a, every uh, denomination now is an interpretation of Christianity, is what I'm meant to say, not of the Bible. I meant to say of Christianity. When I think of Christianity, it's, but every interpretation of, every denomination is an interpretation of Christianity, is what I mean. It's, okay, there, every denomination is an interpretation of what Christianity is, okay. But that's not the Bible. That's what I just said. That was an, okay. I didn't so the Bible, that was an, Bible right. is independent. So the Bible is completely independent. No, the Bible. No, I meant what to say Christianity. Christianity. I meant to say Christianity, not Bible. Okay, but this entire time you've been saying I read the Bible this way, and that's what makes you a Christian if you worship this particular God that I interpret this way. Yeah, well, all I meant, all I mean, Christianity. Okay, but uh, all right. I guess we'll just move on then. Um, yeah. So, the next thing that I want to talk about is our superstition argument. Mm. Uh, I asked you the same thing that Theo Warner asked you. We agree that if somebody believes in a superstition, then this can lead to bad effects. The effects of superstition can be bad. We agree with that. The question was, what makes superstition... Who agrees with that, me or Theo Warner? Theo Warner and myself. Oh, all right. The question is, what makes superstition intrinsically bad? And your response was, it is a negative and it is not true. Correct. And I responded by saying, uh, defining it, in, at least in part, in, in my latest response, and I apologize because I didn't actually see you say not true in the first comment that you said. I apologize for that. I did not see that. Um, but I said, even if you take that into account, if you define something in part to just be bad, then that is itself topological. You know that, right? Repeat that. If you define something, if I'm asking you to define why something is bad intrinsically, and you simply define it in part as bad, then that's tautological, and that doesn't make any sense. It's unjustified. Are you saying that's what I did? Well, you said that it's a negative. I, I asked you what makes superstition intrinsically bad, and you said it's a negative, and it's not true. Yes, yeah, a negative meaning it's false. It's not true. Oh, oh so, you're just, so you're just being redundant. My bad. Uh, if I, I, yes. Yeah, well, yeah. You were being tautological, you were being redundant. Uh, all right, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, that, sorry that upset you. I, well, I didn't, it didn't upset me. It just confused me. Um, anyway, which I think anybody can agree, if someone's being redundant and using different words and equivocating them, that would be pretty confusing. But anyway, if you say that it's not true, and then that's what makes it intrinsically bad, then everything that falls under the category of not true is then bad, which is why I brought up that you would, then you would be forced to say that, that anime is bad, because that, cause anime isn't true. The, the, these are not true stories. What was the definition I gave of superstition? Uh, I, asked, I asked you, and your response was point for point, superstition is a negative and not true. All right. that, that was what you now, said. It's, now, my definition was a false thing believed to be true. Right, that's what you said in later on. Then I pointed out that pranks can sometimes fall under this definition. And well, let's go back to the anime. Lies. And white lies can come under this definition. Well, let's go back to the but anime. You're saying, but those are bad now, too. Well, let's go back to the anime. Okay. Now, if superstition is a false thing believed to be true, now we know anime characters do not exist. They are false. Are they believed to exist? Um, I don't think uh, anime is believed to be existent, no. All right. So if superstition is a false thing believed to be true, and anime is a false thing not believed to be true, then anime is not superstition. I understand. And that's why it, later on I gave a different example. Okay, so... Well, telling you that... But that's not what you said at first. At first you that said, is what I said. Uh, not, at first you just yeah. said that it's not true. And then I said that anime would be not true, and then you'd be calling that to be bad. And then you, and added I, on, you added on later on that it is not true and it is believed to be true. And then I said, okay, uh, then white lies are then necessarily bad, and so are pranks when people believe the pranks to be true. Yeah. You're saying that those are bad now, too. Okay. Then, then you, need a, you need a more substantive definition than they're not true and believed to be true in order to call uh, this intrinsically bad. The only thing, if something has, for something to be bad, if superstition, that would make it a false thing believed to be true, would make it superstition. Okay, then white lies are superstition. No, let me finish if you like. All right. All right.
if white, if superstition is a false thing believed to be true, and something that is false is not believed to be true, it is not superstition. So if you take a prank, the prank is already defined as a prank. It is not defined as superstition. So it is not superstition. If it was, the, if a prank was defined as superstition, it would be something believed to be true that is superstition. But it is not defined no. as superstition. It is defined as a no. prank. Okay, I'll try to lay this out a little, a little simpler for you. When you say that superstition is bad because it is not true and believed to be true, you are creating a group of things. You are right. creating you are creating a subset of things that are not true and believed to be true. Other right. things that are involved in that category are white lies and pranks. Yes. So if you're going to label the category of not true and believed to be true as bad, then pranks and white lies would then be bad according to your definition. I am not labeling things that aren't true or bad. I'm labeling things that aren't true and believed to be true. Yes. I am labeling superstition bad. Okay, but see, this just goes back to the whole tautological deal. You're just label you're just defining superstition to be bad. And that doesn't no, work. No, I'm defining superstition is bad because it is false. Right. And then I point out that there are things that are false that aren't bad. Then you say that it has to be true, that it has to be false and believed to be true. And then I said that there are other things that are false and believed to be true, which you don't think that are bad. So you need a better definition of superstition if you're going to say that it's intrinsically bad. I uh, know the definition is adequate. Listen. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you think it's adequate, but it's tautological, so I don't care. You understand? You don't care. Uh, okay. If it's tautological, it it's a show. If, it are you that, uh, are you, do you want me to explain it? or you Go ahead and explain it. it I really can, don't care. Go, well, I don't care if you're just saying, super, I'm just defining superstition of that, because that's taut, that, is, uh, yeah, that is just a tautology. All right. I'll try it again. Superstition is bad. Why is superstition bad? Because it is false. Now, we know superstition, the sentence superstition is bad stands alone. Why is superstition bad? Because it's a false thing believed to be true. Anime, is it bad? Well, I don't consider it bad because I watch it. Is it anime false? Yes, it is false. Is anime superstition? What is superstition? A false thing believed to be true. Is anime a false thing believed to be true? No. So it is not superstition, which is bad. Therefore, anime is false, and that makes it anime is false. But you know, so are white lies and pranks because they are defined as white lies and no, pranks. no, 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 no. You were you were fine until you just decided to skip over white lies and pranks. I didn't you skip did, over. Yeah, yeah, let me explain. Let me explain what you did when you when you made the comparison between superstition and anime. Is you said anime is not. A false thing believed to be true. Exactly. Therefore, it's not bad. Exactly. However, white lies are false things believed to be true. Exactly. Therefore, you're saying those are bad. Nope. White lies. <laughs> are, white lies are defined as white lies. They are not defined as. I did, it doesn't matter. You're say, again. It does. says that the characteristics of superstition that makes it intrinsically bad are false things that are believed to be true. White lies are the exact same thing in that category. All things believed to be true. Yes, but it doesn't make them bad because they're not superstitious. <laughs> but again, you're just at that point. You're just defining superstition to be bad. You're saying the, the characteristics of superstition, either both not being true and believed to be true, are bad, unless it's not superstition. Oh, I see what you're. Oh, I, all right. I get what you're saying. You think uh, you uh, you're not saying I'm saying super, that white lies and um, pranks are superstition. Yeah, I'm saying that they're oh, bad right. according to you. Oh, as all right, I get you now. That, that, took, that, that took a long time. Yeah, well, hey, I never said I was Shakespeare or Einstein. Yeah, I don't get anybody else that either. Yeah, well, you've proven some stuff here too, pal, so uh, don't try. If, so, if, you if, if, if you don't think you have, then I, if, I'm if sorry, you I have to inform you. If you say so. All right, I do. Now, as far as, uh, well, yeah, I can see what you're saying there. That, uh, yeah, well, I never, hey, I don't consider pranks and white lies to be bad, so... But pranks, if you consider, if you say something false, that, uh, but I still don't see how that applies. If a prank is defined as a prank, it's a false thing that isn't believed to be what true. The, what are the characteristics of a prank, i.e. a prank consisting of me? Yes, help? I, I see what you're saying, but no, I wouldn't get, no, pranks aren't bad, nor is a white, are white. Which is exactly, well, no, well, that's but special. that depends on your point of view, I think. Uh, well, if you want to be a subjectivist about it, but that's yeah. why that's why I'm telling you that you need a better that you need a better definition as to why superstition is intrinsically bad. And other things that you don't think are bad also match that definition. I understand. So why is superstition? So it's intrinsically bad still because it's false. 
But then you're okay. But again, I, get, to add, uh, I need to add additional. Yes, you need to add more things in order to make it bad that excludes it from other things that you don't think are bad. You make to me, and we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, topic. Um, you're kind of an asshole, aren't you? I, I apologize. I've been trying to be as mean as I can. I, well, as, as nice as I can. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, I've been, you've missed the mark. I, I, I apologize. Sure. So uh, another thing that you said is that if we want to see... No, I, I'll, I'll wait for that one. Uh, here you were talking about um, Kermit the Frog and uh, comparing him to God. Uh, and when, So we were talking about signified and signifier. And you were saying that there were two truth claims to you that we're, that we're comparing we're saying that Kermit the Frog exists as a puppet, yes. just like one plus one equals two. They're both and God doesn't exist, just like one plus one equals two. Yes. So you're saying that it's a hundred percent math can say that. Well, you can say that, but regardless of that, for the sake of my argument, I just used the, uh, I just asserted that God didn't exist for the sake of the argument. Okay, so you asserted that God doesn't exist just like 1 plus 1 equals 2 so that you could make an argument. Yes, it was a, so part, it was of my, it was a part of my argument. Like in a, it so, was an analogy. So, uh, yeah, okay, so it wasn't an actual thing that you were declaring. It was just uh, a hypothetical. Like, yes. say God doesn't exist just like 1. Okay. That's but, like, if, but if you ask me if God doesn't exist, if, you, if I believe or if I know God doesn't exist, I would tell you with 100% assurance, I know God doesn't exist. But that wasn't my uh, aim in that analogy. You know that a deistic God doesn't exist. Not a deistic God. I'm, talking oh, about okay. I'm only concerning myself with the Christian. Okay, so you know the Judaism monotheistic gods don't exist. That's what you're saying. This particular one. Okay, see, I'm of the opinion, and this and this is something that I, I that can be argued, but I don't think you're the person to argue this with. I've been reading a lot of Wittgenstein lately. Do you know who Wittgenstein is? I've heard of him. He is a jerk. Is he an asshole like you? I don't know. He's characterized as an asshole, but he was a fantastic philosopher. And um, you're in good company. Okay, great. Um, anyway, uh, Wittgenstein essentially wrote a book called On Certainty, and I've been reading that book, and it's an extremely good book. It's, what he says in it is that to say that you know something is as ridiculous as to doubt that which you think you know. Well, so if you say, I know that God doesn't exist, what you really mean is, I'm certain that God doesn't exist. You don't, in fact, know it. Mm, I know it. Okay, so that's, so you're saying that you know it. Can you definitely you're, know it? you're basically saying that knowledge doesn't exist. 100% knowledge is an illusion. Well, I can probably, uh, I can probably, uh, yeah, I can probably go with that. I can probably say that. But if you're not talking about, mm, nah, I can go with that. But uh, if you're not talking about 100% knowledge, if you want to talk in sort of uh, a human kind of standard, then I can say, I don't know, that makes sense. As a, I don't know, metaphysical one? Well, metaphysics is another thing that's, that was uh, constructed by humans to understand our thoughts. So that yeah, we, that we know what it means. We know, but we have an idea of what it means. We may not know what it means, I guess, is what your point is. But Wait, I, Okay, we'll, we'll go ahead. You, you went ahead and conceded that, so we'll just move on to the next one. This, this will probably be the last point. Can you explain to me what you think the, the argument from divine hiddenness is? Well, from my interpretation, it simply means that someone does not understand what a God wants because this God is, its uh, mind is, I guess, beyond humans to understand. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, you're kind of right, but you left out a lot of shit. I'll go ahead and explain it to you a little bit better. The argument from divine hiddenness means that a god has a heaven and a hell. The criteria of which you go to them includes believe in him. This god, being benevolent, doesn't want you to go to hell. So mm -hmm. this god would then, by default, that would make his presence an inarguable fact. And because he has not uh, believed that that god, there is argument among Christians, among Muslims, among Jews, among Hindus, about this god. Because this god is not clear, and a lot of people are going to go to hell because of that, then this god is either an asshole or he doesn't exist. Yes. Okay. So now you understand what it means. So what you did in your latest video, which wasn't addressed to anyone in particular, but it was addressed to, I think, Theo, me, and CB, um, was you read off uh, uh, a, a series of comments of some guy who said, I think I understand Bill's argument. And he pretty much outlined that argument. And yeah, then no. Said, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And then you said, that is exactly what I meant. Yes. 
So what is the difference between, I mean, I know the difference between your argument and that argument, but what do you think is the difference? Because you said before that that's not the argument you're making. Well, why don't you tell me what the difference is you believe it is? Okay, the difference that I see between your argument and the argument is that it cannot, cannot happen if a God exists because this God would want us, because if this God did exist, then he would reveal itself in a way that there would be no need for interpretation. Yes. Okay, and that's not the same thing. I know. Okay. Well, if this God is omniscient and omnipotent, and it has, and it has sent a Jesus or Christianity to humanity, for humanity to worship and follow, the sending of this Christianity, this Jesus, is the evidence that this God wants humanity to know it exists. If you don't agree with that sort of that sentence for believing. Now, if you now as far as the God's actual existence is concerned, if this God is omniscient and omnipotent and it sent evidence for its existence, then it wants humanity to know it exists. So humanity would because that's what the God wants. Not necessarily. I mean he could have sent Jesus down just as a just to wipe slate clean and it doesn't matter if you believe the God that Jesus exists or not, it still happened regardless. Like your sins are still wiped clean regardless of whether or not you believe. Because Jesus was sent. Yeah, we could say that. All right, so that because, you wouldn't have to believe. Uh, no. If then you would have to bring in Adam and Eve. What their purpose well, no, was. No, because and, a lot and of what the people actual, don't believe in Adam and Eve. I know that's where the interpretation comes. But as I, but as I thought I had clarified to you, I wasn't. My interpretation was for not. I, people can bring me their individual interpretations as they feel, okay. and I can respond to those. My interpretation was to what you consider a angelical Christianity. Now that, now that guy does or doesn't want humanity to know it exists. Okay, I, I, I want to make this clear because you really didn't say anything there. You said that an evangelical version of God uh, doesn't, does or doesn't want humans to believe that he existed. So we yes. literally haven't said anything then. I already said if it's sent Christianity, that is his evidence for its existence, pure and simple. Uh, that is the evidence for its existence, its sin, if you read the Bible literally. Not necessarily. Again, you, uh, there's a lot of interpretations that you don't have I know. at all. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. But I'm talking about that subset you're talking about. Now, if someone wants to bring me their individual interpretation, well, I'll work on an equation for that. Okay. Um, can you work on an interpretation that says you don't need to believe in Jesus? Yes, that's an interpretation. I can work on that one. Can you do it now? That you don't have to believe in Jesus, then I would ask... You'd say, I don't know. Well, then I would ask you, what evidence do you have that Jesus existed, that you can even say you don't believe in Jesus? Uh, they didn't, I didn't say that they would say that they don't believe in Jesus. I said no, I thought, I, thought you, I thought you were playing uh, devil's advocate. Well, I am, I am playing devil's advocate, but I am, I'm saying that... But then you have to... I mean, have, they would, no, they wouldn't you, say whether or not they believe. They'd just say, I don't know whether or not he existed. I would just say, they, they just... Well, no, all right, all right. Well, first you'd have... Well, for us to go anywhere, you'd have to... Say that this person is actually a Christian, and they actually they actually okay have okay I'll, I'll they actually have some teachings that they I'll try I'll try and make this a little simple. Let's say that they do believe Jesus existed, but that you don't have to. They say you do believe Jesus existed, but you don't have to. Right. I'd ask them if they believe Jesus existed, and if they said yes, then I'd ask them who sent Jesus. Uh, I think they would probably look at that the same way that they would say it, that Bill O'Reilly asked the question, "Who put God there?" I mean, who put the moon there? So they would say they don't know who sent Jesus. They would say that's a nonsensical question. Uh -huh. So then they aren't Christian. No. Exactly. Yes, they wouldn't be. They would if they're Christian. Are, are you saying that now that they're a Christian that do not believe the God Yahweh exists? That there can be a Christianity that does not believe a God called Yahweh exists? Yeah, they're called atheist Christians. No. Very true. <laughs> I, I I know I'm a trip. Um. Okay, so I just want to go over all the right, so these atheist Christians. All right. These are, these are new ones for me. So what do atheist Christians believe? In the teachings of Jesus and how to be a better person, but they don't believe in the God or Jesus' divinity. Do they believe Jesus existed? Sure. As what, a just a human being that preached? A philosopher, basically, is what they believe. Yeah. So then that's not Christianity. Why? Because Jesus sent by God is separate from Jesus that was born and just grew up and went to school and wrote a book. Okay, but that, just because they're different Jesus, it doesn't mean that's not Christianity. I mean, Buddhism is atheistic too, but they, but they believe Buddha existed in, that, in, 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 in his teachings. But, or, they, but it's atheistic. No, Jesus is, Jesus is, if he's a normal man, he's not Christianity. Christianity. Why? 
Because Christianity either comes from a God or it comes from man. Why? If simple, because God. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, I can say that. Let God me, I can say. Let me finish. God either exists or it doesn't. If it, if it wanted humankind to worship it and follow a religion, a way to worship it, it sent a religion called Christianity. Man. Therefore, yeah. See, then, if you want to play the play that role, that's well. I'm not, that, I'm playing game, I'm, that's not a game I'm willing to play. Uh, well, I'm playing the role of the people. Have to play that game. I'm playing. I'm, I'm playing the role of the people who disagree with you. All right. Yes. All right. Well, well then let's go with this. We'll work with this. If this God sent a religion, Christianity, it either sent it or it didn't. If it didn't, then you want to say that Christianity was actually uh, was actually uh, created by some guy who was born down the block named Jesus, and he wrote a philosophy book called Christianity. Well, I don't think he wrote a philosophy book called Christianity. I think he just spoke to people, and then they wrote it down. Yeah, well, whatever. I think that would be... If, that, 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 is, if that is what Christianity is, <laughs> that's what their Christianity is. In, if that's their interpretation. We're talking about interpretation. Every interpretation, according to some people, is valid. So if that's the interpretation... Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. And you're saying that it can't be Christianity. Why? Not if Christianity comes from a God, like some people say. Um, not necessarily. That's... Yes. No, and they can believe they can believe that it, that Jesus was just a guy who had some good ideas, and then they follow his good ideas and not believe in a God, and that and still call that Christianity. That's their right. Yes, that that is their right. But my point is, if that's right, and people who say if that can be called Christianity, and people who say that Christianity and Jesus were sent by a God are both correct, if they can both be correct, then it's crap. If everything's equal. Hell exists. Hell doesn't exist. It's all at the same time. It's all the same. It's all eat, and that's absurd. <laughs> you know, that's hell, not, I, I know. hell existing and not existing at the same time. If that works in your mind, then no, I'm not saying either hell. Ex I'm not saying hell exists and at the same time it doesn't exist. I'm saying some people believe that's, what, that's, hell. What, that's what that's what our acceptance of multiple interpretations or denominations gives you. That's all it gives you is that. It doesn't, no, it doesn't force you to conclude that hell both exists and not exists. If you say they are both valid, it does. It's, I can say that one's bad and one's good. Yeah, and then you're left to figuring out which one is and which one isn't. And that is what my argument is trying to do. Right, and I can say that because I can, I, I can talk to two Christians and I can say, is your God benevolent? And they, would say, and they could both say yes. And I would say, well, hell doesn't match up with a benevolent God. And, then, and I could say, so an interpretation that goes with a benevolent God that doesn't include hell is a better interpretation than a God that does that is benevolent, but yet it can tell. I could say that there's a better interpretation there. Yeah, but which one is right or which one is wrong? You can whichever, say whatever you want. Whichever one indicates the God they believe in. I, I, no, I wouldn't even no. say either one of them is right. So, atheists, yeah, I'm defending Christianity, and it's starting to get, like, I don't know, I, I really should just leave this to the Christians to do, because all I'm trying to do is point out that your logic is silly. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, you get to do that. Well, maybe but, except for the except for the uh, superstition thing, where I need to go on that a little bit. I, I mean, but other than that, that's your opinion that I haven't done that. But you know, regardless, I think I think everybody yeah. here disagree with you. Well, that's would I guess like you, your interpretation is their that's interpretation. Your but, <laughs> yeah, you'll have to say that again. You, you that, 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 that 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 appears to be everybody's interpretation except you. Everyone's interpretation. Wow, that's except you. Everybody that's watching. Everybody that's watching. I'll say that. No, no, everyone that agrees with you is not everyone. I must tell you. I I, I understand. That's why I made the uh, clarifier. Everybody that's watching right now. I'm just letting you know that there are plenty of people that agree with my argument. And okay, that's fine. Uh, but everybody who's watching you do this right now it pretty much thinks that you're being they, your your logic is pretty silly right now. Well, let you know. That's their interpretation. As you I, as you like to say, the only thing with this fact that interpretation can exist in Christianity is that my interpretation is just as valid as anyone else's, unless you can prove it is in that. Well, that's well, I, can, I, can, I can prove that your logic is silly, and, and I can do that by proving that's, that it's invalid, by saying that, it equal, that multiple interpretations doesn't mean uh, invalidity. It doesn't mean invalidity, it means all things are valid. No. In Christianity. It doesn't. Well, if I can give you... I, I I, again, I already told you that if, if a God is, is benevolent, then you can have a good interpretation of that. Sure, it is evil, not though. Yes, it does matter. It may not matter to you. It, well, I don't think it matters to you either. Yes, that's what my argument is about. That's why it exists. But again, all this really goes down to is my God is benevolent.
and, and therefore my interpretation that there's no hell is better uh, consistent with that particular kind of God. And at that point, all you, can, you, you, in arguing with them, can only come to the argument of, okay, can you give a demonstration of that God's existence? No, my argument is that what you believe about hell doesn't matter. Hell either is something or it isn't. Right, and they would say that it isn't because of what they believe. And that would be an interpretation, which would make any interpretation valid. No. Yes. Again, I, okay, if, you are. If you define God to be benevolent, that's up the universe. Yes, but they, it's either bad or good. Yes, but at that point, can you really demonstrate that? If it is bad or good is the point. Yes, which one, the only way which one is it? That? Which and one is it? They, and the only way you can get them to demonstrate that is by asking them for the evidence of that which they're claiming. can't ask. They have too many interpretations to ask them. That's no, they, you have, oh, they don't know. One person doesn't have a shit ton of interpretations. No, they're too, everyone's interpretation of Christianity is the result of the, all these denominations. One of them is right. One of uh, the rest have to be wrong. It is as simple as that. Not, nec yeah. Yeah, not necessarily, because there could be multiple uh, interpretations of Christianity. Yes. Where yes. Where yes. Other Which means that hell can exist and can't exist at the same time. No. Again, you don't <laughs> have. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain this to you. Um, I'm, I'm feeling the same frustration. If somebody says Christianity is open to interpretation, but there could be bad interpretations and good interpretations, then they're not forced to come to the conclusion that a hell a bad interpretations and good interpretations of Christianity is not interpreting Christianity. Yes, it is. No, it is not. It's not. If you say, well, it is technically interpreting okay. Christianity. Yes, that yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is Christianity. But yeah. if you say, but if you say there is a bad, well, you're just agreeing with me. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it either is bad or it is good. Yeah. There's one or the other. Yeah. So you, if there is one or the other, there can't be interpretations. There can only be one or the other. No, there can be. <laughs> Again, there can be interpretations, and some of them can be better reflective of what the truth is. And some of them can be worse reflective of what the truth is. Yeah, but there is a truth. Yes, and? And if you cannot discover that truth, then the, the, all the interpretations are made up. No! You can't. Yeah, yeah. Let's take this back with economics. There is one way in economics that we can say works better than all the other ways, depending on the situation. It works better in one way, but people interpret economics differently. Does that mean that there is now not one way to, to interpret economics that makes it better? Was well, economics sent by the most powerful being on Earth? It better. I'm telling you that different interpretations can include can be there, while there is still one actual truth that the interpretations are not correct on. You're saying there can be there can be an actual Truth. There can, can be, be in the midst of all these like, there can be interpretations. There is there can be worse interpretations of economics and better. Are you saying there is? Are you saying there is no interpretation of economics that is actually real? No. That, all right. That there is a real interpretation that, what, of economics. Are you saying that there's no interpretation of Christianity that's real? No, I'm saying all the interpretations, then one why, of them is I, only real. Then why did you ask that question? Because that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking. Because about. yes, it does. My. Are you just playing dumb or what? I, Let me ask, ask you a question. All right, here it is. Economics, whatever that is, it's something. Now, people can try to decipher what it is. They can come up with a multiple of things of what economics is, but it's actually only one of them. They have, they'll have to break it down to the... Oh, okay, they can make it wrong. Yes, but... Yeah, but that is not sent by a God. That economic is not sent by God. The, Bible, the Christianity is. So, it, right. it doesn't matter. There, it, there is one way to interpret economics that's better than all the other ways. If there is one way to interpret economics that is better than all the ways, and that is the way economics will be interpreted, will be abandoned. You don't necessarily know what the best way is. Just like Christians don't necessarily know what the best interpretation is. So, if they don't know what the best interpretation is, you can't... If you... Economics will be synthesized to its best one. All others will be abandoned. That is how, that is human nature. No, we they, they, that, because they we've, had the, the, we've, we've had so many types of economics. And if economics is have synthesized to that one basic human then sets. Christianity, multiple sets, simply, multiple sets simply makes all sets valid. We have multiple sets of economics, none of which are the one best way that we can, that we can figure out so far. So then, you're saying, so then you're saying there is no, so then you're saying there is no best Christianity. It, you, you don't know what Christianity is. You don't know what all valid. It's all That's, valid. No! I, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you equate Christianity 
Appreciate it. All right, all right, all right.